All right, here we go. Episode two of our Descent series. We're going to be painting Kali, Khalil, Kal whatever her name is, uh, the Dwarf Artisan. We're going to be painting up. These models are fantastic. Uh, I just want to say that I'm obviously uh, painting these, but they are really good models. They did a great job. I'm thanking Fantasy Flight for them. If you uh, are your first time watching it or you've been watching this series for a while, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, hit that bell button. Also, if you are a super fan, all half of you or nobody, I also am doing a membership. If you really support this channel and want to support this channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. But obviously don't feel obligated. I'm just glad you're here to watch this video. But without further ado, let's go. Obviously, the first thing we're going to do with this miniature is we're going to scrape off all the mold lines. And again, I'm going to reiterate how good these models are. There is not barely any mold lines on these things. These models are very good, well put together. We're going to take that miniature and we're going to put it on top of an old spray can cap. I use some sticky tack and we are going to start getting our base coat on this miniature. And what I'm gonna be using is an airbrush. Um, if you don't have an airbrush, it's not a big deal. It just makes your life 10 times easier because we're gonna put some deep, nasty Zenithal highlights on this thing. I'm gonna take some of that white primer that I'm using in my airbrush. And if you need an airbrush, you can look to see what I have. It's in the links below. Um, and I'm going to hit up a vast majority of this miniature with the white, and this is going to add to the overall effect of our highlighting once we start highlighting this miniature. If you do not have an airbrush, you can always hit it with black spray paint and then hit it with white from above. It's just so much harder to control. This way you can control it if you're doing it with an airbrush. And we're going to get some of that nice white from above and in certain portions of the ground below. All right, we're gonna do a series of contrast paints on this base to make it that earthy look. And we're gonna start with Agaros Dunes and we're gonna get it in the basically the whole thing. And we wanna do this in succession where it's still wet. Next, we're gonna take some Militarium Green and we're gonna start dabbing that into certain areas throughout the base just to start breaking up the colors. Next, we're going to take some Levadon Blue and we're going to dab that into some certain areas as well just to break up the colors. And this kind of looks a little weird at first, but I promise you once it dries, it will look fantastico. Next, take some of that Basilicanum Gray and hit those little three rocks that are behind our Dwarf Warrior. And once you've hit all of those rocks, you need to let this bad boy dry. You can skip ahead to start on the miniature or you can just wait. Once you are fully dry, take a nice little piece of sponge and dab it into some Castellan Green and start dabbing everywhere. Now you do not want to really hit the portion of the dirt where our Dwarf Warrior has pushed the dirt back. We want to keep that separate original color. Next, we're going to take some Elysian Green and we're going to dab that the same way we just did with the Castellan Green, start breaking up that color throughout our base. Next, we're going to take some Averland Sunset. We're going to do the same thing. And if you watched episode one, you already know where we're going with this. We're making a kind of a mossy earth effect for our miniature to keep with the uh, base theme. Next, we're going to take those leaves. I originally thought they were arrowheads or arrow fletchings. They still might be. I'm not sure. But I saw them as leaves, so that's what we're going to keep that as. We're going to take some Lauren Forest, and we're just going to do a nice little trace over the, the top portions of our leaves. And 
And for our last step on our base, we're going to take some Moot Green and do the same thing. Just go over those leaves and it gives that nice little pop of green basing leaves to give that nice color variation, which makes it look, in my opinion, very good and not that hard to do. Next up, we're going to do the skin and the hair, and the first thing we're going to be doing is the skin. We're going to take some dryad bark, and it is crucial that you thin this paint enough that you're going to see that zenithal highlighting poking through, and that's exactly what we want. While we have that dryad bark dry, we're going to take some white, and we're going to put in some eyeballs to begin with. We're just going to take some pure white and hit that eyeball that is on the right and the eyeball that is on the left. The left eyeball is much harder to hit, so take a smaller brush while you're doing this to get that in. I suggest a size 10 brush or a size 50, whatever you have lying around. Next, we're going to take some of that Agrax Earth Shade and we're going to douse down that face to give it that nice dark earth look. While that is drying, we're going to take some Rhinox Hide, thinned of course, and we're going to do the hair of our miniature. Your Agrax Earthshade should be dry by now, so take some of that original Dryad Bark that we have in our wet palette or whatever you're using, and we're going to do a reapplication on the face. Next, we're going to do a 50-50 mix of Dry Bark and Night Quester Flesh, and then we're going to start building up our highlights, hitting those cheekbones, the nose, the neck, forehead, and the mouth. Then take one more brush full of the Night Quester Flesh and add it to that serum you just made and go over the same portion of the skin again, and we're building up our highlights by adding new colors. Once that is done, take Pure, Night Quester Flesh and start doing the same thing, building up those highlights, the same exact areas that we've already hit over. And we are again, building up those highlights, getting the skin tone that we are looking for. Our final skin tone, we're gonna to take our Night Quester Flesh and half a brush full of Bugman's Glow. If you wanna go a little bit more, you can and we are going to mix that together and build up our highlight of our face. This is gonna kind of give it a little bit of a reddish pinkish tone to it, just to give it that nice skin tone. And you have a pretty good skin tone that's gonna to match the cart art for the face of our Dwarf Warrior. And if we're following the card art, she has nice blue eyes. So we're gonna add some of that Baharth blue in there and then a dab, dab, not a dab, a dab of black for the pupil. Then take some of that good old Agrax or shade and hit that hair up and we're gonna let that dry as we move on to the next step and we'll finish the hair in the next step after this dries. We're going to start on all of our metal bits and the first and probably most prevalent color of this miniature is going to be our Retributor Armor which is along the shield, a vast majority of that crossbow and the hammer that our dwarf, it's actually Artisan, I keep saying warrior but she's a dwarf Artisan, is holding. Now in this stage, we don't need to be exactly too careful. Obviously, the less you get it somewhere it doesn't need to be, the less you gotta clean up. So take your time, do what I do, throw on a podcast, listen to a book, or put on some good music, and just relax and enjoy the paint. You don't have to worry about what's going on in the real world. All you're focusing on is how good this miniature's gonna look and board gaming with your friends and family. And that's what I love to do. And again, we're just following around on the card art and we're hitting up those 
nice little ram heads that are on the hammer of our dwarf and the top and the bottom and there's some portions that we're going to need to get gold on in the front of the miniature specifically the belt buckle and some that is on the chain mail that she has on her shoulders but we're going to get to that later so if you're using a wet pellet obviously get a little extra in there for what we're going to be doing later And don't forget the end of our hammer. Now we're going to go back and finish that hair. We're going to do another reapplication of Rhinox Hide, sticking with the raised points of our hair. We do not want to get any of this into the recesses. We are then going to do a 50-50 mix of Doombull Brown and Rhinox Hide, and we're going to again go on those raised areas of the hair just to start building up those highlights. And finally, we will be doing some straight Doombull Brown just to get some nice little highlights on the most raised areas of our hair, and that's all, that's all we're doing. Now you can do this too, this is an optional part. If we're gonna follow the card art, put some Mephist in red, hit those, I'm assuming they're jewels on her head that are sticking out of her hair, I'm guessing. I don't know. Next, we're gonna take some of the Iron Warriors and we're gonna get some of that little metal portion on our crossbow. It looks fantastic, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. For our wooden piece of our crossbow, I'm gonna use some flat earth, which is a Vallejo color. You can use whatever you want because I felt like I'm used too much brown on the hair. So I'm kind of going with a different like earthy look, but you can use whatever you want. This is all I wanted to do. For the front of our shield, and again we're following that card art, I didn't feel like it was a metallic looking color. I felt like it was a very stonish looking color, like this dwarf was living in the mountains and they made a stone shield with gold plating. So we're going to be covering this thing in Dawnstone on the front. And on the back, just be careful on the back because it is kind of hard to reach. Next, we're going to take some uh, Celestra Gray and we're going to hit it up with the hammer. Now, we already have done some of the metal pieces in the language. That I'm going to assume it's a Dwarven language on the hammer, so just be a little careful, but if we get some on it, not a big deal. We can go back over that with the Retributor armor. Also, we're going to be using this on some other portions of the miniature, this specific color, so save some for later. We're then going to go back to our Rhinox Hide well and hit that on the hammer to give it that nice brown leather look. And then going back to some fist in red on the back side of our hammer, we're kind of all over the place, but I wanted to do it in portions. And to finish up, finish up our base coloring of our crossbow, we're going to use some Baylor Brown for the string. Again, trying to match that card art as much as possible. Then I'm going to use some washes. First one's going to be Reichland Flesh Shade, another Citadel wash. And we're going to hit all of this gold pieces, which is going to give it a nice looking color that we're going to highlight up here in a minute. And next we're going to take some Nolan Oil and we're going to hit the front of that shield to get that nice deep black wash into the cracks and recesses of our shield to make it look a little old and dirty and grimy, just a little bit. We're 
we're also going to use this on the metal portion of our crossbow on the back as well. Now I know it's still drying, but we're going to take some of our original Dawnstone and we're just going to hit up those raised portions to start making a lighter look on those raised portions. And we're going to do a couple colors with this, but we're going to do one right now and then we're going to come back to this in a minute as we let the rest of the wash and the recesses dry. To highlight up our gold areas, we're going to take some Liberator Gold and we're just going to hit some top portions, some of the lettering, some of the edging of our gold. We're not going to overdo it. We don't want to douse this thing in Liberator Gold. We just want to make a contrast from the washed gold and some light gold. By painting the tops of the language or whatever they are, the inscriptions, it makes it look just a little bit better as the contrast is brought up from the recesses that are surrounding those letters with the wash that we did. We are then just going to take a little bit of iron breaker and hit the topmost edge portions of our metal on our crossbow. We're going to come back to our shield and we're going to mix a 50-50 mix of Dawnstone and Administratum Gray and then we're going to just highlight up just those raised areas real quick just to give it that nice bright look that matches the card out. I know I keep saying that, I just that's my goal in these videos is to match the card out as much as possible. Alright, we're going to move into our, I know there wasn't a break in there, but that's alright, whatever. Uh, we're going to move into the rest of the clothing for our miniature. We're going to start with Morn Fang Brown. And again, you're going to really need to concentrate on what I'm painting and stopping the video and looking to see exactly what I painted this brown. Because there's a lot of different mixed colors on our dwarf that she is wearing. So we're going to be hitting a lot of those leather portions up with this Morn Fang Brown. And we're kind of using our imagination just a little bit on the back side and for our feet. This would be a good time to pause whatever you need to see what I painted brown on the front side or the back side. We're then going to make a little bit of a lighter brown with some Bane Blade Brown and we're going to hit up some of the areas that are obviously lighter on the card art that we are trying to match up. The red sash that she is wearing, we're going to take back to our Mephisto and Red well, and we are just going to make that thing red. Now be a little bit careful because she does have it that goes towards her back, and you're going to need to be very cautious when painting around that. Don't go too crazy. Take your time on these steps as we're getting closer to the finish line.
we also want to do the belt buckle as well as we got this paint out right now. We're going to go back to our Celestra Gray well and we're going to start painting a vast majority of the white places. This is going to be our undertone and we're going to hit it with a base tone of white after we're done with this. This might take one, two, possibly three coats. Some of the places that I had painted specifically on the back took three coats after they dried completely. I put another coat on. You want to make sure this, this specific color sticks out and is fully coated over. Again, while I'm painting this, you might want to stop the video, rewind it, or just look to see where I painted and go back and just follow along exactly with what I'm doing. Because it's kind of difficult to explain exactly which section I'm painting for what reason and where. So, but we need to follow just what's going on. Obviously looking towards the chainmail that she's wearing and the front portion of her armor that our dwarf is wearing. We're gonna use a little Zandri dust on our little pouch that our dwarf has on her right hip. And if those other colors are drying, we're gonna hit that belt buckle up with a little bit of Retributor armor to hurry up and get that done and over with in case that is drying on our palette. For our metal portions, I'm going to use some Grey Knight Steel. This also includes the bolts that you can see on the front and the back of our miniature that are sticking out. We're using this specific color, which is a very bright silver from Citadel. We're going to go back to our sash and put a little bit of Blood Angels Red on there, which is a contrast paint. You don't need to use this if you have Carabar Crimson, or if you don't want to touch it at all, you don't need to. I just did this to give it some extra red. Now we're going to go back over all of the portions that we painted Celestia Gray with Corax White. This can be a little bit of time consuming because you're going to have to go over it one, possibly two times, except for on the back side that took me three times to get this over. This is the closest color I believe that I found that matches the color of her armor. Just be very careful. Obviously we're at the very end of the finish line almost, and we want to just not have to make any more messes that we need to clean up than we need to. Again, we're just taking our time, cruising around. The only thing we do not want to paint with the Corax White is obviously the hammer that is in Celestial Gray. We want to keep that color as is, as it is a very flat looking color, and we want to keep this miniature looking flat. Again, we're going back to that Retributor Armor well, and we're going to do a little bit of edge highlighting. Now, you need to be very careful on this. Use a small brush. I'm using a size 10 zero brush on some of these, and we are going to be painting the chainmail on her shoulders and some edge highlighting that's on the front as well. Just follow along with what I am doing.
We're going to highlight up that brown armor just a little bit as the second to last step with some Doom Bowl Brown. You don't need to do this. I am just doing this a little bit just to kind of give it that nice contrast look. Two-tone variation of our leather. And finally, your favorite step, we are painting the rim of the base. I'm doing Abaddon Black, you can do gray or whatever you would prefer, it's up to you. And that's it. That's all we're doing. It took a little while, but I think the juice was worth the squeeze because this miniature deserves to be painted in a fair way that looks great on the table. And you did fantastic. Hey, I just want to say thank you for everybody who's watching this channel. If you're still there, um, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that bell button. And please uh, let me know your thoughts. And uh, subscribe so you can vote on the next video coming up next week. And I appreciate it. All right. Paint on.